Hey YouTube, today we've transported back to medieval times because in this episode we're taking a look at the latest LEGO Ideas Blacksmith set. Hey guys and welcome to Brick Talk TV, Terry here and in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at this LEGO Ideas Medieval Blacksmith set. This set was released in February 2021 and consists of 2,164 pieces retailing for £134.99. As a LEGO idea set, this set achieved support of 10,000 fans and was approved by the LEGO judging panel to be turned into a real set. As you can see from this original picture, the set has changed quite a bit from Nami Rob's original design, but I actually quite like it and I actually even prefer this new design compared to the original. So let's flip over now and check it out in more detail. So here are the minifigures then. You actually get four minifigures and a couple of extra bits. So let's have a look at this, uh, the first extra bit here. So this is a, a little dog that's owned by the blacksmith, I think. Um, or it could be a wild dog, I've not, I've not checked up. But it kind of looks like a husky or a wolf. Uh, a nice level of detail and the coloration here coming through of, of that kind of wolf feature. And a nice little print out of his face and his snout. It's just quite a nice little detail onto that front uh, area there. And he looks quite nice posed outside the uh, the blacksmiths as well. So that's the first little extra piece. Then the first minifigure then, you've got this archer here. It's a female archer. She's got a, a nice hair piece with some bun uh, tied around the back. On the front of her torso, she's got some nice prints of some lace and some tied up uh, tunic going on there. Obviously a standard bow there. You rotate around the back. You've also got this quiver um, that she's got stuck through around her neck. Uh, with more printed detail onto the torso and if you lift her hair up here you can see that her rear expression is of uh, trying to aim her bow and arrow whereas the front is sort of a, a smirk and a, a smiley face and you kind of position her near the tree because there's a target stuck to the tree of the set which you'll see shortly um, and that's kind of where I've got her positioned at the moment. Then moving on you've actually got the blacksmith himself. I believe that this was based loosely or by accident on uh, one of the designer's best friends He's got, um, he's, he's a ginger fellow, so he's got a big ginger beard and a big uh, lock of ginger hair, which has got a ponytail at the back. He does have two expressions. Uh, I've got a sort of a smiley face hidden underneath this beard. And if you take his hair off from the back, you can see more of a, a grumpier face. So if you did take the beard off, um, you'd also see some sort of stubble that he's got on his face. Uh, he does have a hammer. Obviously, he's a blacksmith, so he's going to need his hammer to hammer out the metal as it's getting hot. And then the printed detail on the front is kind of got an apron or a tunic on the front here to protect him in leather, which prints right the way down into his legs as well. So you can see the detail there. And if you rotate it round to the back, you can also see the straps used actually to fasten on that apron or that protective uh, gear on the front there as well. So that's, that's, the, um, that's the blacksmith himself. Then a nice touch by the Lego group, I think they've added these Black Falcon Knights. So they've kind of bought them from the older set and updated them slightly, giving them more detail on the front prints. And so this guy here, he's got his helmet on and a formidable looking ax kind of tool here. Um, if you lift up his head, he's only got one expression, uh, which is kind of a smiley face. There is a hair piece that you can stick on here, which I've actually got in the cart for safekeeping. Um, and then there's a printed torso, as I said, with the, the Black Falcon Knights emblem on, he's got some silver armour on his shoulders here and the prints continue down into the legs. They're also printed on the on the back of the torso as well there. The other soldier uh, is an older chap, he's got some grey hair and a grey beard going on but he's more of a hand-to-hand -hand combat kind of soldier with a sword and a shield. Uh, again same printed torso and legs and printed on the back. There's an option there to attach some other sort of weaponry there as well and he does have a helmet which again I've kept in the cart for safekeeping so you could switch them out if you wanted to. I think the story for this set is that these soldiers are actually visiting the blacksmiths to get some new weapons or to get their weapons repaired and so as part of that you've got this last bill which you do in the final bag of the set which gives you this nice mold of a horse which you can change his head up and down depending if he's eating or if he's uh, pulling a cart. The middle torso piece here pulls out so this, um, this piece here is used to um, attach uh, a saddle and also then the uh, the look of the put in the cart but equally there is another piece here which you can fill in to a, make it look like it's just the body that he's got so he can just be a grazing horse if you don't want him to pull the cart and I've kept that piece in the in this cart as well for safekeeping so I've got the spare hat helmet and the horse's torso in this cart there is a satchel or sack in here as well um, which is part of the build so I guess that may be some gold or silver that the 
soldiers are bringing to the blacksmith to pay for their repair. The car itself is a nice little build. Uh, you've got the falcon shield here, so a spare shield if the other soldier wants to pick it up. A nice lamp here so that the soldiers can see where they're going. And you can position the soldiers on here as the horse is pulling this along. And it'll bound around the corners quite nicely. Uh, so that's a nice little way to finish the setup when you get to the final bag. And I think it looks really good out the front of the blacksmiths with the soldiers approaching to give, tell a story of the soldiers coming to get their weapons repaired. So now we've had a look at the minifigures, let's take a flip over now and we'll take a look at the set in the greater detail. So here's the actual set itself then, and as you can see, it's really striking with these vivid sort of blue and green tiles used on the roof and its whole construction, I think it really sort of pops and stands out. And I think really, compared to the original design, for me, this really caught my eye when it came out. When I saw the original idea, I thought, I'm never gonna sort of purchase that. It doesn't really look that interesting to me personally. But when I saw that Lego had released this, for me, um, I was just like, oh, I have to get this because the techniques used and the level of detail and just being able to build a sort of medieval building, which I've never actually built before because I never had the original castle set, was something that I really wanted to have a go at. And I did not get disappointed with this set. This is probably one of the best sets I've built for, for a few, for, well, for, for about half a year or so, something like that. Um, just every level of detail around it, the techniques used, the internal detail of it, the unusual architecture and all the beams and everything that goes together, and just the level of detail that they put into this it just really, um, really blew my socks off and I loved every minute of it. So let's take a look at, it, look at it then. So I'll start over this side here. You can see that there's an outside area where there's this apple tree and it's actually quite a complicated build I found to get this tree to, um, to to pull together. I mean, obviously I, I did it, it wasn't too difficult, but it was more difficult than say, another standard tree build that you may find in other sets. And this tree has actually got um, a target at the back uh, where the archer can be positioned. And so you can you can position them uh, just outside here. And then this lovely little detail of a well here and the way it's constructed is really clever uh, to give an idea that there's some water under there and a little bucket on the side. So this is how the blacksmith gets his water normally. Um, so that's a nice addition. As you move around the front here, so this is the front, you can see that the blacksmith's got his anvil here and it's got a clip on it so you can position a sword on there if you wish. And this of course is where I'd usually position the blacksmith standing around here. This is the opening to his hearth so he can actually put um, the weapons in here. And you can see there's a sword positioned there at the moment and there is a light brick in this which seems to be uh, issued quite a lot lately. So I think Lego are trying to push light bricks quite a lot. And actually there's a bellow here. So if you push the bellows in, as you can see here, it lights up to give an illusion of some fire that's going on there. So you can make it look like the sword is getting heated up, ready to be uh, bashed into shape. And of course you build up various translucent orange parts in there to give an illusion of, of some fire. Up here uh, is the logo for the blacksmiths. And I believe that they took inspiration or guidance from the original designer of this set, who actually quite likes traveling. And so they've included some pictures of some mountains uh, either side of the actual uh, tile itself. This is a printed tile, so there's no sticker required uh, on this part here either. As you move around to this side on the outside, you have a pumpkin patch, uh, just an extra bit of detail here. There is a bone there as well for the dog. So you can position the dog around here. And then at the back, there isn't much going on in terms of the outside, but there's a little bit of foliage there um, by the bottom window. So what I'll do now is I'll take off each level. There are three levels uh, to this, and we'll take a look at the ground floor and see what details we've got inside the building. So here we are on the ground level then. Uh, as I mentioned, you've already seen all the anvil and details here, but there are some steps that you build up here with some beams ready for um, to take the weight of the overhang of the upper level. Uh, and it's just a staircase then that leads you up to the top, ready to go into the main living quarters. But the downstairs of this build is actually the blacksmith's workshop itself. You do have over this side, which I didn't mention earlier, a little entrance here, which actually has some logs in here. So obviously to get the fire burning and keep things going, that he needs quite a lot of wood. And so in here, they have used some nice cylinder pieces or barrel pieces with some log ends to actually make it look like there's a stack of wood in there, which is a really nice touch. Inside then, inside the blacksmith shop itself, you've got the internal side of the hearth, so you can see all the fire burning in there. And if you press the light, you can see the fire glowing up inside. The door is built itself, so you actually build it out of Lego bricks and there's some wooded tiles used on the front to give you that wooden effect and it opens and closes quite nicely. There are some tools that are stuck on the side of the wall here, so you've got a broom, a shovel 
and a hammer for the blacksmith to use. And in the middle of the room, there's another anvil that's, that's got an orange uh, piece on there already, which looks like it's already been heated up, ready to be bashed with a hammer. Moving around in the corner, there's a barrel full of iron pieces or iron bars, which I imagine would be turned into swords or something in the future. Uh, there's a, a saucepan there and a sort of a cauldron kind of looking thing stacked up next to the, the window. There's a helmet that the um, blacksmith's already built that's sat onto a, a pedestal, uh, ready to be sold. Some crates with some iron ore in, ready to be picked up and turned into something good, I think. There's some shoulder armor that's stacked up on a rack next to a shield as well. So the blacksmith's already got some uh, armor ready to sell if people come to his door. And there's an angle grinder kind of millstone underneath that where you can use it to sharpen your swords or your weapons or axes and things like that. Uh, and then there's a sort of a stack of some coal, I think, ready to be put onto the fire as and when needed. And that kind of completes the detail internally downstairs. Outside, you know, by the pumpkin patch, you've got some more uh, wooden beams going up, which is going to support the overhang of the upper level on this side compared to the other side. Uh, so the downstairs has a kind of a small footprint, but just enough to give you the detail of that actually a blacksmith does work in there. So let's flip over now and we'll take a look at the next level, which is where the blacksmith is living. So here we are then on the next level up. So this is actually where the blacksmith lives. So this area here would be the steps from the previous level as it walks up. And again, you've got some more framework here to support the next level up, which we'll get to in a second. But as you get to the top here, you can see another wooden door that's built um, again from bricks. And so you've got some tiles here with some wooden planks to give that wood effect. And this opens up quite nicely into the main living area. As you come into the living area, you've got a nice table here that's brick built again with some uh, chairs sat around. The chairs are an interesting build because the actual backs of the chairs are created out of using um, two ax pieces and a rod to give this kind of uh, effect at the back of, of wooden chairs. You've also got some uh, chicken on the table with a couple of goblets ready to drink and some will be a plant piece to give some idea of some vegetables, I guess. Some candles are stuck on the on the wall as well to provide some lighting and there's a standard Lego staircase that runs up to take you up to the next level which is going to be the bedroom in a second. Over the other side of the of the room on this side you've actually got a, a chimney starting to form here and you can see this is an overhang here from the previous level with the, uh, the blacksmith sign hanging from but there's a chimney back here where there's a stove on the inside here uh, which has got a looks like a carrot soup maybe being prepared or something like that with a cauldron hang, hanging above the fire there's a saucepan next to it. And over on the front of over here, you've actually got an area where the food is being prepared. And you can see that a carrot is being chopped up. There's a carrot held in place by a clip. And there's a single tile there to depict a slice of carrot being chopped off, I think. On the wall, there's a meat cleaver and there's a saucepan being hung from clip. And over in this corner here, there's actually a, I imagine this will be a milk churner to actually churn some milk because it's a stick inside a barrel. Hidden underneath the steps, if we go back on this side, there is also a keg of beer or some sort of ale or something like that that's been uh, hung up onto um, onto a stand and there's a tap there ready for you to take, to take whatever drink comes out of that. So again, the detail in this level is, is quite nice. There's not too much space to play with, but the space that there is available, they've put some nice details there with, with uh, some a keg of beer, some area to prepare your food and actually the, the cooker itself is a quite a nice uh, little tuck. There is as well on the front, you know, this chimney starting to form which will continue and goes right through to the roof as well. Uh, and then on the outside of the building, you can see that there's now this sort of Tudory kind of medieval wooden beams detail starting to appear on all the sides now as well. So you start building these up and adding those level of detail as you go through the wall build as well, which is quite nice. So let's flip over now to the, uh, the final level which is a bit more complicated, which is where the uh, the blacksmith actually sleeps. So here we are on the final level there, and as you can see, this is where the roof is. Now this is a really clever construction because um, it kind of hangs here in place and you can take off the front section and the back section separately, and the frame is actually built uh, separately as well. And then you, you finish off this type of build actually with a chimney, so you can actually pull this off if you wanted to. So let's take the roof off and I'll uncover what's underneath. So as you can see here, this is the, uh, the back roof. There's some hinges on the back to allow you to position it as a, as a slope and then you just cover up the plates that are underneath it with these tiles in a certain configuration. These green pieces at the top are supposed to depict moss that's growing on the tiles themselves so it's quite a, you know, an old building and they just hang in place 
uh, and get caught here where you've got some uh, curve pieces onto uh, a mechanism that you build. So then we just put that to the side and I'll spin this round. I won't take the front roof off for this part. So as you can see in here, you've actually start building up the bedroom. So the, these pieces here, these um, panel pieces are where the roof actually clips into place and hangs so it doesn't fall off. But then here you've got a, a wolf skin or bear skin on the floor, which is made out of different tile pieces, which is a nice little touch, I quite like that. Over in this corner here, you've got a writing desk and they've used the once upon a time tile, which you might have seen in the bookstore inside the uh, Moby Dick book uh, with an inkwell. Um, so the, the blacksmith can write there. And then there's a little candle there uh, on a little side table that can be used. Over there.